Martin Griffiths is the UN Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs and Emergency Relief Coordinator. He joins us now from Cairo. Good to have you with us. So, first of all, can we expect, do you expect, that further trucks will follow? Uh, we insist that further trucks will follow. Well, it's been a key point of all the extremely detailed negotiations that have been going on these last days and are still continuing, that an essential part of any aid program, anywhere in the world, by the way, but certainly including in Gaza under current circumstances, is about humanitarian aid being provided reliably in an uninterrupted fashion to the people who need it. They need to know how long they need to exist on the aid that they get today. I know it's, you insist. Do you have any assurances that it will happen? Well, we are negotiating uh, right now as we speak for tomorrow um, and the days to come. So is there, there a chance tomorrow aid that... might get in? There's a chance, yes, there's a chance tomorrow that aid might get in. It's, it's not going to be anything like the, the, the levels that you have accurately described are needed um, and that we have heard also from our colleagues in UNRWA, which has a huge experience, of course, in uh, Gaza. But yes, we are hoping that aid goes in tomorrow. We're hoping that aid goes in every single day. And we're hoping that it becomes a dependable, reliable, efficient, and at scale operation. And you referred to that um, summit held in Cairo today. I was present, along with my Secretary General, Antonio Guterres. Every single member state that spoke at that summit spoke of the urgent need and the deserving attention of the people of Gaza and of Palestine for that humanitarian aid, the aid that I represent. All right, you said there's a, a chance it might get in even as soon as tomorrow again. Is there any chance that we might see other vitals get into Gaza, particularly fuel? Hospitals need fuel in order to, to operate, for ambulances to operate, people need fuel, and water for, for, for water generators to be switched back on and so on. Yeah, we do. We do need fuel. Let's be very unequivocal about this. Let us not try to be clever about it. We need fuel. Yes, I understand that for some, fuel can be seen as a dual-use commodity. We have a lot of experience in many parts of the world, in many conflicts, about the issues of importing so-called dual-use commodities. It is not beyond the bounds of our experience and it is certainly central to our current negotiations to work out a system whereby it becomes clear, monitored, transparent, and sure that the fuel that we take in, and we must take it in, for the reasons you accurately pointed out, will not, will not be used for war, but will be used for those essential elements of peace. The Gazan health crisis is beyond belief. The Gazan health institutions are on their knees, and central to that collapse is, is water and the need for water as well as uh, medical stocks as well. Fuel is needed. We must have it. We're negotiating on it. And I am certainly hopeful that we will get an agreement on that very, very soon. We must. We how, must. how soon, Martin, if I may ask, how soon do you think? Well, I, I, I don't know. We, we need, you know. We're operating day by day, to be very honest with you, on these negotiations. Uh, let me just describe a little bit about those negotiations, because I think that gives us a better understanding. We are we're in the UN, and we are operating in negotiations with the Israeli authorities, of course, and the Egyptians, both very much deeply involved in the uh, entry into and exit from Gaza. The United States is often behind the scenes, sometimes in front of the scenes, being extremely important and very helpful. 
We negotiate throughout the day. We negotiate long into the evening. Negotiations will be going on long after this program ends. And I would like to think, I would like to think that by tomorrow, we will have agreement on certain basic aspects. Can I take a moment to explain what those are? Please, please go ahead. So first of all, fuel, as you say, and I think we, we're clear about that. We need fuel. We need to have a regime to demonstrate non dual use. Number two, we need to have a, an inspection regime, an inspection program, so that the parties, neither of the parties either, not only just the one of them, uh, knows that aid coming in isn't going to be used for war. Does it include weapons, for example? We have this from many parts of the world. We have it in Gaziantep, just up the road, for uh, in, in ports into northwest Syria, for example. We have to have an agreement on that in order to know our logistics, our timing, our uh, the, the precise ambit of our needs. And finally, perhaps as importantly as anything else, we need to have an up-to-date picture of the needs of the moving population in Gaza. And they need to move wherever they want to move, not where they're forced to move, but wherever they want to move and wherever they want to move from there to, so that we can know where we need to deliver, how much money we need, and how much funding we're going to need from all those member states who went to that uh, summit today and others who should help us come to the Palestinian at this time of anguished need. OK, you've made a, a few really important points that I can see some headlines coming out of there. Let me try and get one other point, uh, get you to comment on one other point. Are you in any kind of negotiations as well to provide some kind of, I don't want to call it ceasefire, but pause in these airstrikes so that this aid can be delivered? Because what we're hearing from correspondents and people on the ground so far is it's, it's very difficult to get aid out while Gaza continues to be pounded. And I'm sure you don't want to see this stuff simply shipped through the border and put in a warehouse. No, so safety. Safety for people, of course, exactly as you say, is about not being bombed and being allowed to move safely with their families to where they can live safely and eat safely. Now, my Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, repeated yet again today, not for the first time, his call for what he calls a humanitarian ceasefire. And what that means is very simple. We need to have clarity about places which will not be bombed or attacked by anyone, by either side. Typically, by the way, civilian infrastructure, hospitals, schools, and so forth, are actually exempt from any attack in war by the rules of war, by international humanitarian law. You're absolutely Many right, Martin, but do you, I, do you think you're going to get a commitment, an agreement, particularly from the Israeli side, have, not to to bomb certain areas so you can distribute aid there? Yes, yes, we must, we must, we must. We, we, you know, I, I, I'm one of those people who's often accused of being overhopeful. If you don't hope, you don't do things. We are at it day by day. We have a very powerful ally uh, in Egypt. We have a very powerful ally in, uh, of course, the United States. And much, much more importantly, we have a very powerful ally in the law. So, yes, and you're negotiating that right now with the Israelis? We, we're negotiating with all, all sides. We're, we're negotiating with all sides. I don't think, I'm not so unrealistic to think that we will get all places to be safe. Of course not. But we need one, two or three. We need places where people can feel safe, where we can feel safe. You know, we've lost staff as well, of course, in Gaza, just like the poor Gazan families that you've been describing. My office has lost family members also in Gaza. The misery of Gaza is not contained within Gaza. It has spread throughout the region. So we need to have those places of safety identified. We need to know that we can go there at certain times safely, that people can receive us safely. And that safety, and I keep using the word deliberately, is about not being attacked. 
Hence, Antonio Guterres and his repeated strong call for humanitarian ceasefires. All right. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for uh, highlighting and explaining what's going on behind the scenes.